Hello, everybody. This is Joe Fosco with American News Post. Today is June 27th, Thursday. Today is our Thursday sports podcast with Michael Magnifici. Good afternoon, everybody. And Frank Coconati. Hello. Hello, gentlemen. So, we've got a few things to talk about. What's what's on the uh, well, list? I think first of all, let's talk about the Hawks. Right, uh, right. Great Stanley Lincoln. Cup champions. Stanley Cup champions. Patrick uh, Kane, Conn Smythe winner, MVP. You know, he, uh, they played a good game. I the did, the you brought up, game. Right away, I'm going to have to you know, at least make a comment about the goalie should have got the uh, most valuable Most player. of the time it happens that way. I think yeah. there's only Why? been four American Conn Smythe winners ever. Really? Yeah, it's usually the goalie, and they're all Canadian, you know. Right. Yeah, I, I think he was the fourth one. Really? I think so, yeah. I did but I that. thought uh, Crawford should have got it. That well, usually the goalie does. Yeah. You know, he's the one that controls the, you know. Yeah, but Kane, uh, and then they invited Kane and David Letterman last night. Yeah, well, that's because of this. <laughs> yeah, because you know, he was MVP. Because he's MVP. Do you think he deserved the MVP? I don't think he didn't deserve it, but I agree with you that the goalie should have got it. I mean, he, he Nine made, out of ten times the goalie gets some, the MVP. He made some saves that kept them in the game. Well, that goes each in the game. You could score four goals. If your goalie's giving up five, you're losing. You're losing. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, look what happened to them. Right, right. I mean, uh, but it was a great, I mean, to score two goals with, what was it, a minute and 27 seconds? 17 seconds. 17 seconds with <laughs> the last goal. Oh, I know what you're right. The two goals. To tie it. I mean, a minute and uh, You know what? I watched, them, I watched them, and I thought they were going to lose. I did, too. And then I actually know. flipped off. Yeah. But it was a minute 28, and I cut back. It's Tied up. Yeah. Because I figured I'd catch it on Sports right. Center in the morning. And then I come back and they scored in 17 seconds. And what do you think that is? Is that, you think Boston, uh, you know, dropping their guard? What? Because they look like animals out there. Uh, they're whacking the Hawks all over the place. They look like they almost could score at will if it wasn't for Crawford. Right. Well, Boston's getting the hell beat out of them all over the place. They lost Doc Rivers with the basketball. Right. That, that poor thing happened to that in the marathon. Yeah. Um, they're just getting crucified all over the place. The only right is Boston Bruins losing. Right. You know, the only thing they got going good for them is they got uh, their team is up two and a half games. The Red Sox. The Red Sox. And that's that's like a quarter of the way through. Is you know. And that's cruise. a tough division they're in. Right. With the Yankees, With the Yankees and the, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Baltimore's playing good Tampa's ball. Tampa's in Tampa in that division. Yeah. Yeah. They're all playing good ball. But anyway, it's a, it's a great thing for Chicago. Absolutely. It's a great thing. It's just uh, what a uh, what a turnaround for a franchise. I believe you call it dynasty in. now. Yeah. I mean, for the last I, five years. I, I, you know, and I got to admit, I thought Boston was going to beat them. I did too. I, yeah. picked, I, I thought Boston was going to beat them early in the series, but then I saw how they were playing, and the Hawks' speed was just too much for them. I, I, I just, the, the Hawks were opportunists. They, they had a chance to score, right. and they scored. They did. They did. But uh, it was a good thing for uh, the, the Chicago and the Chicago. Do you think the uh, they're going to be good next year, or the next couple of years? I would think so. I don't see them, you know, retooling. Why would you break this up? Yeah. You know, you're going good right now. Leave it alone. Yeah. Don't fix what isn't broke. Right. You know. Right. You yeah. have the mainstays there, and uh, hopefully you'll keep them together. So that was a good thing for Chicago. Want to go to basketball right away? Or? Well, nothing really to talk about that other than Miami. We, we all know that's old news. But um, How about this... Um, Hernandez, this this um, Aaron Hernandez, yeah, he got the. What's the whole story on him? Do you he, know? Got a, he was a wide receiver, one of the best in the NFL for the New England Patriots, and he mm -hmm. got a got indicted yesterday for murder. They found a body about a mile from his house that was a friend of his, this guy by the name of uh, Olin Lloyd, and uh, he came by. I guess when he, they got to the house, when the police started searching the house, they, he destroyed all his uh, videotape and stuff <laughs> that he had, his phones, all his texts. You know, like getting rid of all of it. Sounds like the uh, uh, security uh, department at the Rock and Roll McDonald's in Chicago. I'm sorry, go ahead, Mike. No, I'm just saying. But he got what a got at McDonald's for? Long story. We'll get into that on another show. Yeah. They got, they grabbed him yesterday, 845, I believe, in the morning. He was released from the Patriots within 45 minutes. They don't want nothing to do with him. And you know the old saying, "Innocent until proven guilty." I guess that doesn't count even in NFL football, right? Because they don't care. They got rid of him right away. Well, he's probably had some. Uh, uh, he did have some issues coming out of Florida. Big, yeah, he had some coming. character issues. He's got uh, five or six charges, also gun possession without a proper ID. You know, without well, I mean, what is it with these football players? I mean, there's well, you there's, there's been a big, big thing of what is. Head damages, you know, with football players. Right. You know, these guys, Dave Durson killed himself. Right. Um, who was the guy? Meow. 
Oh. Junior Seau Junior in Seau. San Diego. Yeah. I mean, there's more to this than just beating on the head. Well, I think, I think it's what you and I were discussing before we went on the air was that the steroids, I think it gets you so, you know, like hulky and yeah. that, that you, your body takes so rage much beating. Rage, there's a lot and of it just instances of later. rage is with it. With yeah, the, a lot it, of rage. It proves it. Yeah. I mean, you're a super athlete, 6'6", six, six, or six, whatever this guy is, 6'4", 280, 290, and you're you're carrying guns and flipping out. You got you got a charmed life, yeah. and, and there it's got to be something going on. Like you just signed for forty million, right? <laughs> fifteen of it guaranteed. But you guys, you sort of have like a, it sounds like you're speaking in a tone where you almost assume he, the man is guilty. Do you? Do you I, I don't know. I, I don't know enough. About I think it. he's guilty. Do you? Yeah. I think there was. Why would you rip him? Why, so why would you rip him? Should we just? Uh, Rule rule out a trial and just put. Well, I, you know what? I don't. I can care less. No to be honest with you, but I can care less so about, about learning the facts and evaluating the facts. I've heard enough, and I think the public <laughs> has heard enough. But it, overall, overall, God, I'm not on the stand today. <laughs> I think overall, though, the the question is, this is just another example. Did you heard enough today to convict me of anything? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. No, I've heard. I Bob, uh, it's just another example. Of how out of control football is right now. It is. It's crazy. You know, they're not monitoring these players. They're not checking. They're not. If they're checking them, they're they're not looking for the right thing because no. these guys are juiced up. They're 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 superhuman on that field. They're killing each other on the football field. Well, the I mean, policy in football with the steroids is like the least, you know. Uh, Stringent, you know they don't really go after it because I think they allow for these guys. Listen, they, we beat the hell out of these guys every day of the week. Right. They got to recover. And steroids is a, it's a recovering tool. It also builds muscles. Pads are different. Baseball, there's like you know excuse. You know. Hey, you in the day of, um, even in my day in the seventies, you had big fat linemen. Right. But they were tough guys. It was a, it was I I enjoyed the sport. And uh, you weren't out to really kill each other. You would no. hit and, and play a, a more organized game. These guys are like superhuman they run faster. machines. They're, They're stronger machines. and they run faster. But is the game, the game is, evidently people enjoy it. it number one, is the game better? And is um, is it worth killing these guys? Because that's what we're doing to these that's players. That's what they basically we're, we're do. Really they hurting give them okay to get out on the field when they really, you know, they have the concussion. Yeah. And they give, you know, there's some trainer that knows about as much as concussions as you and I do, and he tells them, you're okay, get back out there. Yeah, and everybody wants to go how out there the and field. All the players do because they don't want to lose their job. You know, some other guy comes in and they say, oh, it's, it's they're it's interchangeable, right? They're interchangeable. You're we'll right. get rid of them. Even like quarterbacks. Quarterback used to be a specialized position. They're getting to a point. Where you put a guy back there that can run and throw and just, it's almost like LA football. Well, it's a now. spread offense now. Yeah. The game is just so speed. It's all pass. It's that run option stuff. It's uh, it's really coming to a passing league. You know. I mean, you watched R.J. Griffin. You see what how he got R.J. Griffin, I think he's been, yeah. I mean, he should have never been in that game. And he just ripped apart his legs. I mean, the coach didn't see. Yeah. There was something wrong there. He definitely shouldn't have been in after the set. They were up 14 to nothing. And, and they say he's back now. He's back and he's cut it. He's practicing, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, they you shoot know. you up. You know what they do. Remember the, the movie? They, they the, you remember the, the movie Rollerball? Yeah. With James Kent? Sure. They said it's the future shock of all sports. Really? Well, the people just want to see hitting, running, you know, beating the crap out of each other. Well, like Dick has said, they said football's a contact sport. He, he disagreed. He said it's not a contact sport. He says it's a collision sport. He says, picture running at the fastest you can and have your head turn and be darting toward the oak tree. That's what it's like every right. time you get hit in the field. He said, it's yeah. a collision, it's not sure. contact. Right. Because these guys just get their brains beat in. You know, they get the heck knock out of them. Right. Yeah. Anyway, so a guy like uh, Hernandez, how do you stop something like that? I don't know what's going to happen with him. He's going up for bail today. He was already denied bail once, wasn't he, yes, yesterday? yesterday yeah. They're making it. The, the defense is trying to do it again. Trying to do it again today. Maybe house arrest or something. Something like that. Because there's there's really two incidences, right? There's one was a... Um, well, he's got five other charges for gun possession. Yeah. But, but he's got the... Else, the they, had, uh, they charged him with murder one. Right. Mm -hmm. He faces life in prison for that. Yeah. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If he's convicted, he'll get life. Yeah. Right. Well, that's usually the case in murder, right. and there's usually a bond for right. murder. You know, uh, even uh, my friend Conrad Black, who 
um, you would think he was charged with murder when he put up over twenty million dollars. Told me that. Not not ten percent, but no, right. a whole, whole thing. over twenty million dollars. Uh, uh, you would think that he was facing murder charges, and and in the end, it turns out he was one of approximately five people uh, alleged to have uh, taken part in a, a fraud um, uh, to the tune of about a quarter of a million dollars. Um, anyway, that's a different story. Sorry, about but it's that. no, it's amazing that uh, what you brought up is so true that uh, something white collar, nobody, I mean, financially, somebody's getting hurt, obviously. Mm -hmm. But you got murderers getting out on the street with hundred thousand dollar bonds, posting ten G's, you know, sure. gang bangers, sure. stuff like that. Right. You yeah. Know? And here's a guy got to post twenty million. You know why? Because he's got the money to post. Yeah. yeah. Over twenty million. Over twenty. Yeah. But but Hernandez, getting back to Hernandez, I mean, he's he, they feel he's a risk. They let him out. He might shoot, kill more, or kill himself. No, he, they said he was at uh, he was at twenty three uh, lockdown, twenty three hours. Gets an hour out in the yard. And uh, said he was okay. You know, the sheriff came out and said he was a model guy, very respective. Um, they might do what Joe said, put the bracelet on him, give him a big high bond, you know, some five million. You know, he's got to post. I don't know if you post five hundred thousand there in Massachusetts or if it's the whole five. But he's got it either way. You know. Has New England dropped them already? Yeah, they released them. Oh, I think a half hour after the uh, forty five minutes after made. the arrest. Yeah, something like that. When we were seeing it, they were on the phone dialing up his agent. I think technically they can void his contract too if they can. Well, he's only guaranteed out of forty million. It's fifteen million. And there is a character clause yeah. in there, you know, that he has to follow. And this is against it. So that bring about the other thirty. I mean, twenty five. Why would a guy, if he's thinking right? These guys all carrying pistols and bars. And Again, you guys are talking as if this man has already been convicted. No, I'm not saying okay. that. I don't know enough about him. We're just, going, know, we're just going off what the facts are with saying. The, with the news. Well, the allegations. The, the allegations, facts right. At this point. The, the facts at the uh, end of the trial. But, right. Uh, right now, they're allegations. Allegations. All right. right. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I, uh, I couldn't even put a, a pulse on it, to tell yeah. you the truth. You know. Yeah. Well, for them, even like Mike says, they have guns. Why would these athletes want to have guns? Well, well, protection. Well, first, shot himself protection. The, the leg in that nightclub in New York. I mean, it, it, to me, I think you know, if, if I were some sports celebrity and wanted to go out uh, into the into a large city and into population, I I think I would want to have be protected. Personally, I think I would hire uh, well, I would a professional somebody, yeah, professional yeah, service yeah, I, I that would provide that. But, but, but they but carry guns. Look at that Plaxico Burst. Right, I was just saying that. What he did this? Shot himself in the leg. Got in a lounge. Years, in a lounge. lounge. Well, why would he put that on? The two years for shooting himself. Oh, he had <laughs> it in his pocket. He had it in his pocket and it went off. Yeah, yeah. maybe he bent the wrong way. You're yeah, right. Off. I mean, that's just, that's, uh, that's wild. It's out of control right now. It is. Uh, uh, football. Football right. especially. Right. It's just... These athletes. The other guy. How about the one football player in Kansas City? I think walked up to the stadium, shot himself in the head. They called the coach out. Killed the girl, didn't he? Killed yeah, he killed his girlfriend. And then and went over to the GM's and office and killed himself. Yeah, he like wanted that. the yeah. coach first. Said, yeah. I wanted to speak to Corral, Coach Corral or right. Cornell. Corral. Corral. Shot himself in the head. Yeah. No. During some murder suicide. There's something wrong, but what drove him to that? Did anyone ever get to the bottom of the story? I mean, people don't just wake up. Not in all cases, anyway. I'm sure there are true lunatics out there that would do something that's you know totally what, to unsubst yeah, unsubstantiated. But for a, a, a person who is is a dignified person uh, to wake up one day and kill people, do we ever understand what drives the people that do these things? Is that ever exploited? In I, the I, the thing I, I think is that it's, it's young people with Hollywood, well, pro sports, uh -huh. young people with way too much money to mm -hmm. in their lives mm -hmm. and don't have the proper management team around them to help them. You right. know, to or keep them down there. Right. Because, because they, they all do goofy things. They, I think they just, do right, yeah. they're always trying to outdo each other. Right. I mean, they're always, what do I do for the rest of my life? What do I do... You know, how do I maintain this? I right. Mean, so outdo each other by killing someone or by just being a superstar athlete. I guess they they figure the pressure, how long does think? this yeah? They think how long does this last? What am I gonna do after this? Or they drug of everybody loving him and then it goes away. Right. Like Junior Seo. Yeah. He, everybody loved the guy, but he, I guess it wasn't enough. Or they they're claiming the hits on the head. Yeah. He had he had, uh, uh, I see. he had post concussion syndrome. Right. Well, they definitely changed. They, they said that he might have had 20 concussions. 
during his football career. Not only three or four of them right. were, were documented. Right. So they sent him out the field when he was still dinged up. Interesting. Yeah. Jake Durson, before he killed, he killed himself, himself, left a note saying, left a note, check my brain. Check my brain. Yeah, the check my brain. And they found it. Science do on my brain. And they were what right. What the NFL has done to me. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's no, a, it's, a, it's yeah. a huge problem. Yeah. A, I mean, they, 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 a lot of them don't want to address it because it could ruin football. Sure. But it's a huge problem. Well, the problem is, is that if they addressed it and they had a very uh, strict rule about it, they'd be taking players out every half a minute right. because but they're all getting banged up. Do you think the NFL would be as popular of a sport if they uh, were restricted to playing flag Hell no. No. People love yeah, to see right. the damage. But here's the problem. Here's uh, I, I, the, I, was, I was joking. I know you were, but here's <laughs> what's here's, here's, here's here's funny. The rules got it down when the helmets paper. weren't as advanced and and, and uh, NASA tested and, right. and, and, and and so high tech, nobody got really, there were guys hurt, but not like this. Dick right. said not that. Like I this. Saw my the mouth. helmet is the biggest weapon. Right. It's the biggest, it turned into the biggest weapon out there. It's a rocket. Right. It's a launching rocket. And so maybe they should play with a lesser... Um, Dick is a big face the, mask on. Right. Or just wait, it won't be so eager both, to get, yeah. yeah. I'm going to pad both sides of the helmet, the inside and the out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they pad their, uh, their butts, maybe. But uh, that's the problem, and they're, they're killing each other. They're yeah. actually, I, you watch the games yourself, it's right? It's a multi billion dollar sport. Yeah, that's right. not going to stop. They're, 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 they're going to kill each other yeah. because it's making money, and everybody's making money, and these poor athletes are just going to end up in a home somewhere right. talking to themselves. Right. Well, and, what's the uh, shelf life for them? Three years, four years, the average? I, I Yeah. It used three to be. Or four years. years yeah. It very used to be six or seven. Like it ten years. just doesn't happen. Sure. Yeah. And a lot of them now are bowing out. You know, saying, hey, you know what, I probably do have two more years of, on my career. I've made enough money. I'm yeah. Not, I'm going to go in there. And there's actually guys not going into the sport. Right. And that's what's going to happen. A lot of the mothers are going to say, go into basketball, go back into baseball. Right. Golf. Golfing. Golf. Yeah, golf for the real, oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> the real one. <laughs> Well, you know, golf is pretty tough on the body, too. Look at oh, all yeah. that shoulder problem. Well, here's the Woods elbow problem. Woods is not even the his own tournament this week. Tiger Woods, he bowed out because of injury. Really? Uh, yeah, his elbow's all screwed up. And he's not going to come back till four weeks when the uh, British Open, or three three weeks, I think, three, three weeks from now. He won't play. Uh, this is his own charity you know, outing. Uh, oh, how old is he now? 36. 36. Is he 36? Yeah. But he's banged up. He's old. His elbow, he can't go. We can finally run for president, right? Or that was last year. Who? Oh. Woods. He's 30, over 35 now. Oh, you got to be 35? Oh, sure. I think he's on uh, his down I mean, he's, oh, oh. he's won four tournaments this year. Yeah. Yeah. He just hasn't won a major. And a guy like him that sets the bar so high, he's just measured by name. Right. He's right. only measured by that. He could win 10 tournaments, you know, win all these tournaments all year long. And if he doesn't, if he goes over in the majors... He's looked at as a failure for the year, which is a. It's, they raised the bar for this guy so high. Yeah, you know. he's unbelievable. How well, Michael, do you think Tiger Woods will be playing when he's fifty? Oh, he'll be dominant on the senior sure. tour and the championship sure. tour. Sure. Oh hell yeah! He's got fourteen year, more years. Of oh, he'll play till he's the shape he's in. That he, you know, barring injury, you know, his back, knee, right. You know, all of that's elbow now. Um, He'll play well into his mid fifties and this will be productive. He might be a sixty year old winner. You might see him win a major when he's not even on the regular tour. Like at, at fifty two years old or something. Like we see Watson at sixty two he contends in a lot of these yeah. things. The British Open right. he contends in. And he's sixty two years old, so you know Woods is in way better shape than him. Of course. You know. And there's more technology to keep your body up, so Well right. Woods Woods got that uh Sex addiction, so he's got to watch himself. You know, he's well, he's got the girl on the course. They were joking about it on the Dan Patrick show. She's like every every like shot he hits, she goes, "I'll be over by the side of the green over here." No, and they were joking, saying, "Yeah, he's just making sure that he doesn't have sex on the course." <laughs> he put an ex on or an ex shot. Yeah, you know, she looks like the ex wife. Yeah, yeah, she's just like her. So she's a big girl though. Is she? Yeah, it seems like it. I mean, a big model. Well, he's a tall. He's a deceivingly tall guy. He's he like six one. Yeah. I stood next to him on a driving range at oh, uh, Chicago. Yeah, watched him hit balls. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, I used to go out there all the time. I would never follow on the course because you never get a good look. I'm not right. going to sit on one hole and just watch a bunch of. Did you ever go to the Medina one? The one in Medina? Yeah, yeah. I went to the U.S. Open in '99. Everybody's there. there. I hear yeah. everybody's there. Yeah, I went to the one in U uh, the U.S. Open in '99. When Woods beat uh, Sergio Garcia, when he ran around the tree, you see the shot. Yeah, remember that? Yeah, oh, I remember. I remember the traffic in that area. Was, oh, it was it was you, could, you couldn't even right. get off uh, 
55. Exactly. And late. Yeah. What a beautiful course. Yes. I mean, what a beautiful club. Yeah. I think what George Poulos is on the board there, or he used to be. Yeah, I believe so. Well, he yeah. wasn't a member there for sure. I don't know right. on the board. George and Patty. How about anything else you want to touch on this Just week? Just a little bit on uh, A-Rod, that he had a little confrontation in the news this week. Uh, Cashman, the GM, Brian Cashman of the New York Yankees, he announced, he tweeted that he would be, he's ready to play, his doctors cleared him. Well, his doctor can't clear him. It's got to be the Yankees, Yankees doctor. doctor. He's got to clear him. And he said, Cashman said he should shut the bleep up. They, they, well, what do you, you think is going on there? They don't want him. They want him to bow out of the contract. They, really? Yeah, they don't want him. Why, he's just not playing he's well? He's not playing well. He's not worth it. Is he involved in the steroid thing at all? He's never getting in the Hall of Fame. Really? He's never getting in the Hall of Fame. And what a ball player. Yeah, How great ball. How much does he got? Doesn't he have 500? Oh, he's over 600. Six something. And now they've proven he was taking steroids. Two times. <laughs> Two times. He admitted the one, and the other one they, he tested positive. He was, he was at one time thought of as the best ball player. Oh, they time. thought he would break all the home run records right. and you know just set things on fire. And he was on steroids. He was on steroids. And they don't even want him now. They don't want him. You could tell when they did, when Cashman did that interview and they were asking about everybody, Derek Jeter, and he says, Captain, you know, just you know, one more answer. Right? He loves him. Yeah. And Jeter, did you ever hear Jeter get in trouble? No. Never hear about Jeter a fraud or anything. Player. Never does anything. Yeah. Right. A Rod's sitting there sending notes into the stands for girls, girls. and Yeah. What was Madonna in it or what was it? Somebody, yeah, he was dating her. No, girl. yeah, right. It was somebody else. It was somebody big. Somebody big. Yeah, send a note in the stand, give me your number. Here's another guy. He had it all. He had everything. Right. The highest paid Spit contract, out right? Two hundred something million dollars. He's still gonna get it. You know, <laughs> he's still gonna get it. <laughs> How there's is insurance like that? for that for the Yankees to recoup mm -hmm. some of it. But right. they're still gonna have to pay. What kind of businessmen are these guys? They they sign these guys up and then they they, they don't care. It's all the agent. The agent yeah. knows everything. You and I couldn't sit there and barter with the no. owner. They, they make you sign a piece of paper, next thing you know you're giving up an arm. But you know what? That's how much money the professional sports make. Oh, yeah. You can write off contracts like that. Right. You know what? Get rid of him. He's, got, he's, he's making he's a eighteen million a year. Yeah, he's a headache. We don't want him. And you see that go out the door every because every they figure that they can replace that guy for five million a year. Right. Sure. And get the same pro product. And you got the, you got guaranteed from the uh, TV people. Right. The, um, exactly. Cable and whatever. And they all share. All yeah. The baseball and they all share. Yeah. Which was a smart move. On yeah. That part. On baseball sport. That's why they're able to give these guaranteed contracts. Yeah. You know. But Pittsburgh doesn't get. Like teams like that, they don't get. They don't get the big. They don't get the lion's share. They, 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 they get the chunk. And change. they only get enough. It, it, they got to make some of their own revenue, but they're exactly. not. Exactly. I guess evidently they're not because they're they're playing good this year. Yeah. But baseball in Chicago is. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's. The Sox are in last. And the Cubs are in last. Well, the Cubs, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a Cub fan. But I they're, am too. They're, they're, they're despicable. Yeah. Despicable. Well, you knew that when uh, Theo Epstein came in. Uh, that it would be a five-year plan, you know, they, to even make a playoff they, they, team. They didn't get a little thick. It's a little well, it's, it's you got to be patient, you know. He built the Red Sox well, that we way. We waited too. 104 years, I right. guess. Another couple of years, ain't gonna hurt us. gonna matter, you know. And uh, when in August would the preseason game start for football? Uh, I think the second week in August. Second week, yeah. right around what is that? Elvis, Elvis's birthday or his death date? I forget. One He's still alive. Right? The, is he really? Yeah. Oh, right. There's yeah, been sightings yeah. of him at grocery stores and all that. But uh, him and uh, Morrison. From uh, the doors, sure, so sure. No, I'm, I'm kidding. But I know the the regular season starts in September. Middle September. So right. It's got to be in August. Oh, sure. They, they got four games. Right now. Play four preseason right. games. Just enough to get some of their valuable we'll players banged up. And you and I, well, when yeah. the football starts, we'll yeah. go And they don't the even game. want to do it. They want to play two preseason games. It's ridiculous. None of the starters even play till the third week. Right. You know, that's the week well, that I mean, they play ahead. Why jeopardize you know. getting a guy hurt right. in preseason? It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You know. I mean, a guy gets you playing around. Yeah. I haven't played with no pads on just to, you know, right. go some techniques and stuff. Right. Yeah. You know. So, um, can we hit anything? Is there anything else? No, that's about it. Joe? Well, uh, I... I think, you know, who am I to say about sports? This is your thing, guys. Yeah. And, uh, I think we've you, touched on everything yeah. your weekend. Hawks winning the Stanley Cup. That's great. Trumps everything. That trumps the whole car. The whole town is going crazy in Chicago. I guess. Uh, but Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> now, this, the football season, as we did say, will start in September, obviously. Uh, the preseason games will start in August. August. So we'll, Early have some, August. we'll have some good discussions then. The hockey starts a little while after this. And then... Uh, well, you got the, the NBA draft tomorrow night. Yeah, all right. Yeah, right. I, I haven't really followed up on well, that, but that, that'll be interesting. It's all talk about it at the next time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, uh, Christmas time—that's mm -hmm. when football will be pretty much over. We'll wait for the um, 
to the uh, Super Bowl than after right. the first. And right. Chris, why why do I have Christmas time on my mind? You were telling me something in the car on the way over here about something. Something. Would you have some kind of a difficult time at Christmas time? Christmas uh, time has always got a damper on my mind. Why? Was it well, they, something happened? Yeah. <laughs> what what was it? My house was robbed. Your house was yeah, robbed? Yeah. <laughs> when? Just it's not funny. <laughs> well, tell me about it since you know we've already gone into it now. Well, one Christmas, it was the year before I was getting married. Uh, Nineteen, oh boy, eighty-nine maybe. Uh -huh. Eighty-nine in Christmas, I come home one day to the house we bought from Johnny DeFranzo. Okay. Johnny. Where was the house located? Twenty nine twenty eight North Linder. Twenty what? Twenty what? Twenty nine twenty eight North Linder. In Chicago. In Chicago. He owned a house in Chicago. His son did. Oh, I uh, the one oh, that Johnny overdosed. Johnny probably owned it, but the, son was the, there. the one that overdosed and died because of his drug addiction. Yeah. 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 Yep. Died at a young age. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, we bought that house, my family, mm -hmm. and um, Johnny wasn't too happy about it. The son. And um, we come home about a week before Christmas. We're all, all having coffee and had a breakfast, my family. Come home and they robbed the house. And uh, the only way the people got in is a, a certain way that only the owner would know. Inside job. Yeah. It, it was screaming inside job. Right. And not only that, the one apartment in the house was um, hidden. Mm -hmm. It was like a hidden apartment. No one would know it's there. So. But, uh, did, yeah. did the DeFranzos ever live in that house, or was the the, the, the son lived there? The late son. The son and his wife and his uh, and his son, John Junior. To be the third, I would. I would John think. the third. Yeah. So. Did you um, call the police, or how how did how did you um, come to the conclusion that uh, John Junior uh, burglarized your home uh, in the Christmas season of well, eight nineteen eighty? After your investigation, the neighbor yeah. came and told me John he was at the house. Oh really? Yeah. I hope that neighbor is dead for his own sake now. Yeah, otherwise, he'll probably he, be dead he told soon. Me, don't now that you, you I just won't, rolled, I won't tell threw him under the bus. And, you know, he said Johnny came here first. Johnny came. Junior came on a Saturday night uh -huh. and um, checked the house out. I see. And then um, he came there that after. Well, it was the morning. It was the morning around ten o'clock. Mm -hmm. And um, they went in through the back door and. Just took everything, all the Christmas gifts, everything. What was your reaction to that? I mean, I'd be. Well, when you first walk in, you're, you're stunned. It's a very, it's a violation. Well, aside from the obvious, what did you do about it? Now, if somebody told me that uh, Joe Smith or whomever robbed my home, I'd go straight to the police, or if I knew the person, in your case, I'd go to the family or try to work something out and find out what the heck's happening. I, um, first, I, we said, talked to me and my father. Then we asked the neighbor, you know, we went and asked around first, and he said he was, you know, John Jr. And then uh, I asked my father what to do, and my father said, let me, you know, go see my uncle, which was a partner of Johnny. Is that Steve? Yeah. Yeah. And then he was all shook up. He didn't want to... Hear about it. Well, he didn't want to cause no problems about it. They were, he was worried about poor, poor Johnny, you know, what will... No, I don't what, think it was about poor Johnny. No. I just think he didn't want to agitate him. I see. The father. Because it's so you guys were afraid? I wasn't afraid, but um, Skeets was, didn't want to approach him with it. And he said, are you sure, are you sure? And I mm -hmm. said, I'm absolutely positive. You want me to get a fingerprint uh, yeah. crew in <laughs> here? And uh, so one thing led to another, and it caused a lot of friction with Johnny uh, the father. And Did Johnny the father, Johnny the boss now, he's the boss of the outfit now, said, if you think it's him, call the police. And calling the police in those days was like calling the outfit. So we just had to suck it up and move on. Did they ever family ever make a restitution? Never. Nothing. It was just call the police, which is basically... If you think it's my son, call the police. So is it is it reasonable to conclude that when you hear someone like Johnny DeFranzo tell you, call the police on my son if you think he committed a crime, that's, that's basically him saying without saying um, you have a you have a death wish if you want to my uncle told me you, you call the police this guy will kill you yeah. I, I believe that that 
it's, it's, a, it's, a, a, sin, it's a sin that when you're loyal to people, and mm -hmm. you're loyal and you do the right things, but as my father and my uncle did. Yeah. Because in those days, in the like in the late 80s, these guys were strong. They were very powerful oh, sure. people, and they were loyal people. And to have the son rob the house and nothing be done about it, if mm -hmm. I would have robbed Mike's house, they would have killed me. If I would have robbed... I don't when think I, Michael would do that. No, would Michael would, but... Uh, Michael, would you have killed Frank no. if he had robbed your house? Do you think your father would have? No. What would you guys have done? What can we do? Yeah. Try to get the stuff back. Yeah. But, um, now, I'm sorry to hear about that. Yeah, I know you mentioned it on the way over the, uh, over in the car. Yeah, but, but Christmas is a damn but, and I don't like these but people. I don't, that's why, you know. We'll, we'll bring this to a, we'll start winding this down, but I, I, do, I want to point out something that your story reminds me about, and it kind of contradicts your story, my, my memory of something. When Robert Grizel was alive, those of you listeners out there that don't know who he is, he used to sell overpriced clothes on Harlem Avenue in a building that looked like it should have been a church for um, some evangelist or something. But um, he used to sell overpriced clothes to a bunch of ignorant people in a, a stinking little town where most people couldn't even afford the clothes. Um, and he's dead now, God rest his soul. But Bob Grizel shared a story with me on a number of occasions. It was the same story over and over. Uh, it was probably the only story he felt that was a good enough story to tell as many times as I've heard it. And can only imagine how many times he told other people the story. But he told me the story, and it was that John DeFranzo Jr., the one who overdosed on drugs and died, what people think was a heart attack, but we all know heart attacks are overdoses in some cases, had gone into the store and bought a mink coat or jacket, a male's, uh, a, a male version of this, not a long mink, you know, for a woman or anything, and convinced Grizel to house charge it and he left the establishment. Uh, weeks had gone by, Bob Grizel grew um, concerned about the money, he seemed to be out over the, the garment, and proceeded to start making very friendly and subtle collection call contact with the DeFranzo home. And I guess according to Grizel's story, Rosemary intercepted one of the calls that would be John, uh, John um, as, as the media monikers, uh, has for him, no knows DeFranzo's wife answered the phone and asked Grizel, what, what's, why are you looking for my son? And, and Grizel explained the story and told her what happened. And she said, okay, I'll talk to my husband about it later. And a day or two later, John DeFranzo Sr., the outfit guy, came to the store with the twelve or fifteen hundred dollars, however much money it cost to buy the coat and he paid Grizel off. He said, here, I'm sorry this happened and don't ever give him anything else. It's over with here. He's got no more credit line and Bob took the money. Now, I remember Grizel telling me that story because he told me that story many times and here, John DeFranzo seemed like a stand-up guy in that case, senior. He went down to the store and he paid off a tab for his son. But now in your case, you're uh, almost like a relative of his. That's how close the DeFranzo and Coconatis are. They go back to the beginning. And you and your uncle and father uh, carefully posture this, this case and bring it to his attention in a very delicate way uh, because I, I think you should have done that. And he told you to call the police. He didn't tell Bob Grizel that. And I'll tell you... Uh, you're not joking about this story. You're, you're. I can oh, tell no. you're very. It's a very riveting story. It's a very. I, if I can get away with killing him, I'd kill him. If to rob him my house. Yeah, that, I, that's how angry you were. Yeah, I mean, you you insulted my family. Uh huh. You hurt their. You scarred them all for life. And yeah. this is supposed to be your friend. Uh, yeah. Now, I think that that goes to the character of John DeFranzo Sr. Here's a guy, now, after hearing Bob Grizel's story a number of years ago and now hearing yours for the first time, I've just made a 
I just conclude, I have concluded that John DeFranza Sr. is the kind of guy that he only cares about perception. Mm -hmm. He he doesn't care about the people who are closest to him, the people that he thinks he could push around, right. put under his thumb, take advantage of, uh, disrespect, disregard. The people he can abuse, he will abuse because he can, and that's a bully. Right. It takes a bully to go into a room when the bully knows that he could do something and get away with it against that person. Just that, like that, a that's a bully. They're, they're just like politicians. Yeah. When you give them, they get, a, they get away with whatever you give them. And here, it seems to me like the man, he was worried about public perception. Bob Grizzell's a businessman in the community, capable of telling stories, which we know is true. So John makes the decision, let me straighten that mess out. Shut him up. So let me shut him, him up so we don't look bad. Right. But now Coconati's deal. Well, he had my them. uncle too buffering mm -hmm. me to shut yeah. me up. So yeah. he didn't want to. He didn't have to. Mm -hmm. It didn't cost him yeah. any money and uh, any uh, mm -hmm. any problems because he figured he had my uncle to shut my dad up and shut me up. Yeah. But that, I that's never, a shame. I never forgave. Him. Not a fair. Judging by those two stories, I don't see a fair man there. I see a guy that you know is just uh, he 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 has an agenda, and he he does what suits him for the time. Like I said, mm -hmm. I said a good friend of mine, Frank Calabrese Jr., told me they they make the rules, but they don't even follow these rules. Mm -hmm. and you that's mean his, the case. was he referring to his father? All of them. All the but he only knows his father, according well, to his book. All and of them too. They all made rules that um, supposedly old times made. Well, I appreciate him, him uh, trying to convey that message. But again, I, based on his own words, he, he always, as far as I remember, well, I, I, he I, said I, many I, times I he, he, he only knows well. things about his father. He only knows things yeah, about well, his father. Yeah, and that's all he can right. talk about yeah. is his father. But, right. But but the sentiment makes sense. It's logical. Right. The sentiment does. Here you make weren't sense. supposed to mess around with guys, girls. They're all messing with everybody's girls. You're not supposed to rob somebody's house. They rob people's house. Mm. Um, there's just so much. Well, you but, know, we're, we're gonna have something coming up soon. So. Oh yeah. So. Okay, going back and just maybe closing out on a little, I guess in a more thorough way, the subject with this. Uh, Hernandez football guy that's on murder charges. Michael, what's your prediction? Is he going to get out on uh, some kind of uh, house arrest? I would think so. They let Ray Lewis out uh, when he was uh, yeah. obstruction of justice first in a murder. They he got out on a million dollar bond back in 98. He beat it. He beat it, too, on top of it. So I, I would assume... I'm thinking that he will. I guess we'll know at 2 o'clock. Oh. Who's the basketball player, Jay Williams or something? He, right. He killed his bodyguard. Killed well, bodyguard. I'm sorry, was accused of killing him. He, he, he beat it. He beat it. OJ. He says it was a mistake. The gun off went by accident. Right, right. I remember that. Yeah. But uh, I think he'll get a bond. Now, how, you know, you know, they got to wait to hear the evidence. I mean, yeah. who, who could possibly know? Yeah. You know, because they're not talking about anything. Right. You know. It'd probably be a house arrest. Right. What was the guy that uh, upscout, uh, took all the money off the investors? Uh, Madoff, Bernie Madoff. Right. They gave him a bond. Right. But yeah. he lost his kids. One kid killed him. So well, yeah, that's a that, that's a tragedy. Right. They, they put him on bond with a um, a monitor. Yeah. He had a, something on his bracelet, right. and he turned in, and he didn't try to pull any shots. Uh, he wasn't up on murder charges, but. He was. He might as well have been for the kind of years that he was facing, and then was sentenced. People to wanted to kill him. Thousand suicides. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Right. He basically murdered him with the pen. Yeah. yeah. Now I noticed when we talk about a thousand suicides, there, I heard laughter. We're not laughing at at the uh, no, demise no, of people and their loss of human lives. Absolutely but, not. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, okay, fellas, I think what we're going to be back next week on Monday, July the first. Does that sound right? Yes. Sounds good. All right, guys. Uh, where okay. will we we'll be going at? I'm saying. Baseball? Well, we got golf this golf. weekend. The draft, the draft is tomorrow night. Yeah, That's we can talk about the bowl. We'll talk about the draft. So. Right. And we'll probably have a, an update on this bond hearing that's scheduled. Yeah, with this guy here, this will be news all week, I imagine. Right? Sure. So, all right. We'll be back on uh, Monday, and we'll talk to So, him. take care. All right.